Hi everybody, welcome back to theCUBE as we continue our coverage here at AWS reInvent 22. We're in the Venetian out in Las Vegas. It is Wednesday and the place is still hot, but I can guarantee you that. We continue our series of discussions as part of the AWS Startup Showcase. This is the Global Startup Program, a part of that showcase. And I'm joined by two gentlemen today who are going to talk about what CoreStack is up to. One of them is Easy Natarajan, who is the founder and CEO. And Hi, good John, to have nice you with to us today. Here. We appreciate it. Thanks, Easy. Nice to be here. here, John. And Brad Winnie, who is the area sales leader for startups at AWS. Brad, good to see you. Good to see you, John. Thanks Thank for you. joining us here uh, on, this, on the showcase. So easy, first off, let's just talk about CoreStack a little bit for people at home who might not be familiar with what you do. It's all about, obviously, data, governance, giving people peace of mind, but much deeper than that. I'll let you take it from there. So CoreStack is a governance platform that helps customers maximize their cloud usage and uh, get governance at scale. Uh, when we talk about governance, we instill confidence through three layers, solving the sol problems of the CIOs, solving the problems of the CTO, solving the problems of the CFO, mm -hmm. together with a single pane of glass, mm -hmm. uh, which helps them achieve continuous, holistic, automated outcomes at any given time. Mm -hmm. so, Brad, follow up on yeah. that a little bit because we, we, I think, you know, Easy touched on it there that he's got a lot of stakeholders, right, uh, with a lot of different needs and a lot of different demands, mm -hmm. but the same overriding emotion, right? Yeah. They all want confidence. They all want confidence, and, and one of the, one of the trickiest parts of confidence is the governance issue, which is policy. It's it's how do we determine who has access to what mm -hmm. and how we do that scale and. And it, it, across not only startups but enterprises, this is a huge concern, especially as you know, we talked a lot about cutting costs as the overriding driver for 2023. Mm -hmm. the, the economic uh, compression being what it is, you still have to do this in a secure way and, in a, and as a riskless way as possible. Yeah. And so companies like CoreStack really offer core, no pun intended, um, <laughs> a function there where you, you abstract out a lot of the complexity of governance and you make governance a much more simple uh, uh, process. And that's why we're big fans of what they do. So we think governance from a three-dimensional standpoint, right? You know, how do we help customers be more compliant, secure, achieve the best performance and operations with increased availability, mm -hmm. at the same time, do the right spend from a cost standpoint. Mm -hmm. So when all three dimensions are connected, the business velocity increases, and the customer's ability to cater to their customers increase. So our governance tenets come from these three pillars of finance operations, Security operations and AI operations or cloud operations. Yeah, and and there's so, yeah please go oh, ahead. I'm sorry, just so, no, no, it's fine. so part of what's going on here, that, which is critical for AWS, is if you notice a lot of VZ's language is at the business value with the key stakeholders of the CTO, the CISO, and so on. And, and, and we're doing a much better job of speaking business value on top of AWS services, but, but the AWS partners, again like CoreStack, have such great expertise you know, in that level of dialogue, that, that's why it's such a, a key, key part for us, why we're really interested in partnering with them. You know, how do you wrestle with this, uh, or wrestle may not be the right word, but, but because you do have, uh, as we just went through this, these litany, these, these business, uh, parts of, of your business, or a business that need access, mm -hmm. and that you need to have policies in place, but they change, right? I mean, and, and somebody maybe from, from the financial side, it should have a window into data, and other slices of their business. Um, there's a lot of internal auditing, obviously, mm -hmm. it's got to be done, right? And so just talk about that process a little bit, how you identify the appropriate avenues or the appropriate gateways for people to, to sure. access data so that you can have that confidence as sure. a CTO or CISO that it's all right and, and we're not going to let too much out to the wrong sure. people. Yeah. So there are two dimensions that drive the businesses to look for that kind of confidence building exercise, right? One, there are regulatory external uh, requirements that say that, you know, if I'm in a financial industry, I need to make, I mean, we need to follow in NIST, PCI, uh, and, and sort of compliances, or if I'm in the healthcare industry, maybe HIPAA and related compliances mm -hmm. I need to follow. That's an external pressure. Uh, internally, the organizations, based on their geographical presence and the kind of you know, partners and customers they cater to, they may have their own standards. And when they start adopting cloud, hey, for each service, how do I make sure the service is secure and it operates at the best level so that we don't violate any of the internal or external requirements, at the same time, we get the outcome that is needed. And that is driven into policies, that is driven into 
uh, standards which are consumable easily, like AWS offers well-architected framework that helps customers make sure that you know I'm architecting my application workloads in a way it meets the business demands. Mm -hmm. And what CoStack has done is taken that and automated it in such a way it helps the customers simplify that process to get that outcome measured easily so they get that confidence to consume more of the higher order services. Okay, and, and you know, I'm, I'm wondering about your relationship, you know, as far as with AWS goes, because it's almost like, to me it's like, you know, going deep sea fishing, and all of a sudden you get this big four or 500 pound fish, like now what? Mm -hmm. You know, now what do we do, right? Mm -hmm. Because we got what we wanted, you know. Uh, um, so talk about the now what with AWS in terms of that relationship and what they're helping you with and the kind of services that you're seeking from them as well. well Thanks to Brad and the entire global startup ecosystem team at AWS, and uh, we have been part of AWS ecosystem at various levels, starting from marketplace to ISV Accelerate to uh, APN partners, cloud management tools, competency partner, co-sell programs. You know, uh, the team provides different leverages to connect to the entire ecosystem of how AWS gets consumed by the customers. Their customers may come through channels and partners, and these channels and partners may be from WARS to MSPs to SIs mm -hmm. to how they really want to use it. Mm -hmm. And uh, the ecosystem that AWS provides helps us feed into all these players mm -hmm. and provide this higher order capability which instills confidence uh, to the customers, Absolutely. end of the day. Right. And you know, this can be taken through an MSP, this can be taken through a GSI, this can be taken to, a, taken to the customer through a WAR, and that's how our play of expansion into larger uh, AWS customer base. Mm -hmm. yeah. Brad, yeah, from I, your I, side of the fence. You know, it's, it's, this is where you know, the economies of scale come to benefit um, our partners, and AWS has easily the largest ecosystem, whether mm -hmm. or not it's um, you know, partners, customers, uh, and the like, and so, and and then all the respective teams and programs bring all those resources to bear for our startups. Uh, your analogy of, of uh, catching a, a big fish off the coast, I actually have a house in Florida, I spend a lot of time there. Okay. I've yet to catch a big 500 pound fish, but. Um, <laughs> but they're uh, out there. But they're definitely out there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, and I, you know, so in addition to the formalized programs like the Global Partner Network Program, the APN and Marketplace, um, we, we really break our activities down with the core stacks of the world into two major kind of processes, sell to and sell with. And when we say sell to, what we're really doing is helping them architect for the future. And so, and, and that plays dividends for their customers. So what do we mean by that? We mean helping them take advantage of all the latest serverless technologies, the latest chipsets like Graviton, thing like mm -hmm. that. So this, that has the added benefit of just lowering the overall cost of deployment and expend. And, that's, and we focus on that really extensively. So, so don't ever want to lose that part of, our, of the picture mm -hmm. of what we do. Mm -hmm. And the sell with is what he just mentioned, which is our teams out in the field complement these programs like APN and Marketplace with person-to-person you know, -person in a relationship development for core key opportunities in things like FinTech and retail and so on. We have, mm -hmm. we have significant industry groups and business units mm -hmm. in the enterprise level that our teams work with day in and day out to help foster those relationships and, 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 and to help CoreStack continue to develop and grow that business. Yeah, we've talked a lot about cost, right? Yep. But there's, yep. there's a difference between, between reducing costs or optimizing your spend, right? I mean, there's, th right, there's, so yeah, th yeah. There, there's a they're very different prism. So in terms of optimizing um, and, and, and what you're doing in the data governance world, uh, what kind of conversations, discussions are you having with your clients and, and how is that relationship with AWS allowing you to go with confidence sure. into those discussions and, and be able to sell optimization of how they're going to spend maybe more money sure. than they had planned on originally? So today, because of the extra external macro market conditions, every single customer that we talk to, uh, wanting to take a posture status of, hey, where are we today? How are we using the cloud? Are we yeah. in an optimized state? Mm -hmm. And when it comes to optimization, again, uh, the larger customers that we talk to are really bothered about the business outcome and how their services and ability to cater to their customers, right? Mm -hmm. They don't want to compromise on that just because they want to optimize on the spend. Mm -hmm. uh, that conversation trickled down to taking a posture assessment first, and then are you using the right set of services mm -hmm. uh, within AWS, or the right set of services being optimized for various requirements? Mm -hmm. And uh, AWS help in terms of catering to the, the segment of customers who need that kind of a play 
through the partner ecosystem. Mm -hmm. You know, we've talked a lot about confidence too, cloud yeah. with confidence. Yeah. What does that mean to different people, you think? I mean, because <laughs> don't you have to feel them out and say, okay, what, what's kind of your level, your tolerance level for certain, not risks, but certain um, measures it's that you not, might need I, to I take? I actually think it's flipped the other way around now. I think the okay. risk factor is more on your uh, on-prem environment and all that goes with that. Because the development of the cloud over the last 15 years has been profound. It's gone from, you know, a, that's been the risky proposition now with all of the infrastructure, all the security and compliance uh, guardrails we have built into the cloud. It's, it's, it's really more about transition and risk of transition. And that's what we see a lot of. And that's why, again, why governance comes into play here, which is how do I ch move my business from on-prem in, in, a, in a fairly insecure environment, relatively speaking, to the sure. secure cloud. How do I do that without disrupting business? How do I do that without putting my business at risk? And that's a key piece. I want to come back, if I may, something on, on cost cutting. Sure. We're, we were talking about this on the way up here. Mm -hmm. Cost cutting, it's, it's the bonfire of the vanities in that, in that everybody is talking about cost cutting. And so we're in, so in, in doing that, uh, perpetuating the very problem that we kind of want to avoid, which is our big cost cutting. <laughs> right? So, <laughs> so, but and I and I say that because in the venture capital community, what is what's happening is two things. One is everybody's being asked to extend their runways as much as possible, but they are not letting them off the hook on growth. And yeah. so, mm -hmm. what we're seeing a lot of is a more nuanced conversation of where you trim your costs. It's not essential, you know, spend but reinvest, especially if you've got good, strong product market fit, reinvest that for growth. And that's, and, and so that's, so if I think about our playbook for 2023, it's to help good, strong uh, startups either find, you know, uh, tune their market fit, or now that they good have, have, have good market fit, really run, run and, and develop their business. So growth is not off the hook for 2023. And then let me just hit on yeah. something before we say goodbye here, uh, that you just touched on too, Brad, about how we see startups, right, AWS. I mean, obviously there's a company focus on, on nurturing this environment of, of innovation and of growth and um, for people looking at, you know, maybe through different prisms and yeah. coming, you know. So if you would, maybe from your side of the fence, uh, easy, from CoreStack about working as a startup mm -hmm. uh, with AWS. I mean, how would you characterize that relationship about the kind of uh, partnership that you have? And I want to hear from Brad too about how he sees AWS in general in the startup world, but go ahead. It's kind of a mutually uh, enriching relationship, right? Uh, the support that comes from AWS, because our combined goal is help the customers maximize the potential of cloud. Mm -hmm. and we talked about confidence and we talked about all the you know, enablement that we provide, but uh, the, partnership ex the partnership helps us get to the reach, right? Mm -hmm. reach at scale. Mm -hmm. uh, we are talking about customers from different industry verticals having different set of problems and how do we solve that together mm -hmm. so that like the reinvestment that happens, in fact, uh, healthcare customers that we repeatedly talk to, even in the current market conditions, they don't want to save, they want to optimize and respend their savings using more cloud. Mm -hmm. So that's the partnership that is you know, yeah. mutually enriching. Absolutely. Yeah, to me, this is easy. Um, I think the reason why a lot of us are here at AWS, especially in the startup world, is that our, our, our business interests are completely aligned. So I run a pretty significant business unit uh, in uh, startup Namer, uh, but a, a good part of my, my job and my team's job is to go help cut costs. So, mm -hmm. so tell me, show me a revenue, show me a revenue responsibility position where a part of your job is to go, go cut costs. Right. It's so unique and we're not a nonprofit. We, we just have a very good long-term view, right? Which is right. if we help, help companies reduce costs and conserve capital and really make sure that that capital is being used the right way, then, then their long-term viability comes into play, and that's where we have a chance to win more of that business over time. Mm -hmm. And so, because those business interests are very congruent, you know, and we come in, we earn so much trust in the process that I think that that's that's why I think we're we being AWS are uniquely successful startups. Our business interests are completely aligned, and there's a lot of trust for that. Yeah, it's a great success story. It really yeah. is. Uh, and thank you for sharing your little slice of that, and, and growing slice of that too, yeah. uh, from Absolutely. all appearances. Thank you both. Thank appreciate, you, John. Appreciate your Thank time. you very much, yeah. John. This is part of the AWS Startup Showcase, and I'm John Walls. You're watching the Cube here at AWS <laughs> Reinvent 22, and the Cube, of course, the leader in high tech coverage.